morning, everybody. How you doing this morning? Good, good. I'm going to ask you one more time. How you doing this morning? Good. We're warming up, and we're going to do one more for the Holy Spirit. How you doing this morning? Awesome, awesome. Hey, I, we want to have some fun today. It's okay to smile and laugh in church. Is that all right with you? It's good, it's good. All right, good. Um, I'm going to ask you to stand up on your feet today. Stand up on your feet. It's a tradition that I came from, and I like it. It's in reverence to the Word of God. Unless you're sick or infirmed and you can't stand, please stand. Um, you won't stand longer than I stand, I promise. All right, uh, we're going to be reading out of the book of Mark, and I just want to first to say thank you for coming to Bridgeway. We're grateful that you're here. Uh, we know that week to week, um, faithfulness is a big deal, and so we want to say thank you for joining us this morning. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Chapter 2 of the book of Mark, if you have a physical Bible or a clickable Bible, click there. Um, if you don't, we'll support you on the screen. Um, it reads, from the New King James Version, the first word says, and. Can you say, and? and. Say it with more force, and. and. Here we go. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Say the word. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not hear or could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So they had broken through. Um, they let down the bed on the paralytic with, uh, that the paralytic was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately, can you say immediately? When Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all um, were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Amen. Would you bow your heads real quick? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. We know that the grass fades and the flower withers, but the word of the Lord speaks. Now speak, speak big in me today. That people, your sons and daughters, may be able to run by it, Lord. Cause us to hear the word of the Lord today. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen, amen. I want you on your way down to look to your neighbor and tell them my title. The title of today's message is Weight Watchers. <laughs> Weight Watchers. You may be seated. You laugh just like I laugh when the idea popped in my head. <laughs> Wait, watchers. Wait, watchers. This is the fifth part, the final part of our series, Lifters. It's been a powerful series. Oh, Amen. I get the privilege of closing it out. According to a market research group that um, um, emphasizes and specializes in tracking niche industries, Americans spend north of 60 billion annually to try to lose pounds. On everything from paying for gym memberships and joining weight loss programs to drinking diet sodas. That's funny. Considering the fact that 75 million Americans are actively trying to lose weight, that's $800 per person per year. That's a lot of money. Diet pills and meal replacement solutions are a $3 billion market. There are paleo diets. The Whole30 has become very popular if you've heard of it. There's intermittent fasting. Um, this has come on the scene and the list goes on and on. Why? Because people care about their bodies. They care about their diet. They care about what's going on on the inside of them, um, which is a good thing. But this is not the weight that I'm referring to this morning. 
You know, I want to begin by saying this, and I want to arrest your hearing by saying this today, uh, is weight is one thing that everyone in this room has to deal with. Weight. Whether you're blessed, whether you're stressed, whether your kids are believers or they're out there acting crazy, whether you're a leader of a nonprofit or a leader of a, a major company with employees or a, in a startup, maybe you're in sin or maybe you're walking right in the call of God. One thing's for certain, all of us have to deal with weight. Amen? See, there's weight in whatever we encounter. There's, there's weight to whatever situation that we're in. And in our text today, um, we're going to uncover um, some visuals that will call some of you to pay, to, to, to collaborate. Is that, so, is that okay? Talk to me. Is that okay? Is that okay? So if I ask you to clap, I need you all to clap real quick. Clap. Show me. All right, good, 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 good. You did good. You're excellent. You did good. All right, if I ask you to raise your hands real quick, raise your hands. Man, you're excellent. I saw some look at me like, I ain't raising my hand. I got you. I got you. I'm not going to force you. But if the Lord says, hey, raise your hand, son, you might listen. We just want to have fun this morning. Amen. Um, so, you know, um, there, there was a buzz around town. It was, it, it's, it's Mark chapter 1, verse 28. There was this man that showed up on the scene, and this man was not average. He was not regular. And, and um, word came around town that Jesus was in the house. Can you say in the house? Jesus was in the house and there's something when Jesus shows up in a house. See, I share with our kids and it's, it's prominent in this. When Jesus shows up, people show up. For real. When Jesus shows up, people show up. Another two things show up. Um, when Jesus shows up, problems show up. Amen. Additionally, when Jesus shows up, um, solutions show up. Amen. See, when Jesus shows up, um, it's powerful. And word came around um, in Matthew 20, or Mark um, 1, 28, that um, this man, Jesus, had delivered a man from being demon-possessed. He had healed some people, and it says that fame spread all around the surrounding region. Fame spread around. Now, if, if you need a picture, just think of a concert um, where people queue up and line up. And they're coming from the east, the north, the west, and the south. And they're waiting to get entrance. Just, just think of a, of a movie um, um, release like a Captain Marvel that just happened this past weekend where people are lined up and they reserve and they're queued up. But there's something that happens when Jesus shows up. You have to know something, and I'm preaching from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1. Um, when people would come from wherever when Jesus is really in the room. See, to, to embark upon the word, sharing the word, this is huge. Because John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And to encounter the word, sharing the kingdom of God, the word named Jesus, sitting in the, the company of many to listen upon his voice as he shares his creation and you're getting a chance to stand in it. That's just powerful. See, there was four observations of this text that I want to share that I thought would encourage us today. And I want to share these observations. So if, if you're taking notes today, um, as we begin, I want to share with you observation number one. Can you say number one? Observation number one is Weight Watchers lift him up. Weight Watchers lift him up. This is very, very powerful. Um, the word spread and went around town and, and people begin to talk. Um, you know how things happen. One person experiences one thing and then tells it to the next person and those two people are talking about it in the lunchroom and next thing you know, word spread that Jesus was in the house. One person was touched, one person was healed, and next thing you know, they're like, hey man, look, um, honey, we have a date today, but let's uh, let our date be in the company of Jesus. 
Oh, man. Yes, can, man, he can heal you. Um, and, and they begin to go from afar from the north and the south. And there was a buzz about him in the land. For Jesus said this in John chapter 12, verses uh, 32. He said, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. See, there was something that was happening. And before we go forward, we need to first go back to the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, this reminds me of a man named Moses. You might know him. Um, Moses, um, in this particular time, they had just left Mount Hor and they were walking away. And the people with him grew discouraged. I mean, greatly discouraged. And I first want to ask you, have you ever been discouraged? Anybody? discouraged and the people grew discouraged and something began to happen directly connected to their discouragement they grew discouraged and they begin to complain to, against God they begin to complain about their leader they begin to complain about the situation and God saw this from afar and allowed fiery serpents venomous serpents to bite these people to to pierce their hands and arms and you know what happened they came to Moses and said uh, forgive me uh, forgive me can you pray to the Lord um, that he may heal us can you pray to the Lord and Moses did so and God told him hey Erect the pole, carve out and develop um, a bronze a serpent, put it on the pole and let it be exalted in their midst. When the people gazed upon it, they begin to see all who were bitten um, begin to be sustained and to live. And this is a great picture, a great picture of a man in a crowd lifting up the name Jesus. This is Old Testament foreshadowing to New Testament. Jesus in the end on the cross being raised from the earth that all men and women would reap from this Jesus being raised from the earth. Now, I don't want to mistake one thing. I, I don't want you to mistake because I've said um, him quite a bit. I've, I've said um, to lift him up, to lift him up and um the him I'm referring to is just not any sort of regular person. The him I'm referring to is the one we must look at first. It's not just some average Joe. This is Jesus we're talking about. Can you say Jesus? Jesus. Say it with more force. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say it one more time like you need him. Say Jesus. Jesus. That's, that's better. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, the one who died and was resurrected on the third day. Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus, the son of man. There's no other name by which we can be saved. There's, there's no other name. This is Jesus. I know I'm getting excited. Um, him who we're talking about is not Buddha. Him who we're talking about is not Muhammad. Him who we're talking about is not Krishna. Him who we're talking about is not positive vibes or, or great thinking. Him who we're talking about is Jesus. <laughs> Say Jesus. Jesus. This is Jesus. He gives us a simple name to pronounce. Jesus. There's something about that name. There's something about that name. We can't take his name out of our hearts and out of our life. There's something about Jesus. If you just get in a room where Jesus is being shared, he'll cause your life to change. Jesus. Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Jesus, the healer, the Messiah, the king of kings, the lamb and the lion of the tribe of Judah. Weight watchers, lift him up. Why? Because when you lift him up, friends, other people see him. How did you arrive? How did you get here? Somebody encountered you that lifted him up. Somebody was on your job lifting and digging ditches, lifting up the name of Jesus. Somebody saw you and decided to share. Hey, he did this for me. He can do it for you. And guess what, friends? Now you're here today. 
lift him up. See, lifting him up begins our foundation and, and it begins and maintains our vertical relationship with the Christ. Can you say observation number two? <laughs> Wait, watchers, lift weight. It's going to sound redundant. Like, what is he saying? Weight watchers lift weight. Now, there's so much taking place in this story. And excuse me, my voice is a little weak. There's so much taking place in this story. Um, and, and there's religious guard there. There's people in the church. God, or Jesus is speaking the word. Um, this house is jam-packed full. And it was powerful. The religious in the room, they were judgmental. God raised up the man. But for a moment, I want to pause on all that, and I just want to emphasize um, and zoom in on four different men in this story. Four different men. Now, I don't know how this came about. I don't know um, how this idea came, but one man looked to the right or had an idea, and he, he looked around, and he, he said, you know, we have our friend who's on the stretcher. Let's, let's call our friend. We're in Florida. This is this work. It's a Latin population. Oh, let's call his name on the mat, Carlos. Right? If your name is Carlos. What's up, Carlos? It's a good name. One of my best friends' name is Carlos. Um, let's call his name Carlos. And Carlos is on the mat. And, and he, Carlos, is laying there. And another friend, let's call his name Albert. And Albert's like, I got this idea. Hmm. Carlos, I, I'm going to lift you up and carry you all the way to Jesus. And then this other friend shows up in the room. Hmm, let's call his name Cecil. Carlos says, or excuse me, um, Albert says to Cecil, Cecil, hey, um, I got this idea. He tells him the idea and he's like, that's a crazy idea, but I'm not going to let you carry that weight by yourself. And then Another friend showed up in the room, and we don't know how that other friend got there, but that other friend showed up, and Albert said, what's your name? What's your name? Uh, anyway, um, I won't let you carry that weight either. And then he, the other friend, brings another friend in the room, and next thing you know, the four of them begin to carry Carlos along the way. They begin to carry Carlos along the way and walk with him. And it's an amazing thing to carry some weight. I want to submit to you today that um, an idea at the beginning is always awesome. I mean, I'm going to say a statement that Pastor Joel says, and he says it, um, he's been saying it um, concerning this. We need to observe the humanity in this. An idea at the beginning to start a new business is awesome. It's great. But have you ever walked through something and over time that idea became burdensome, weighty? And this is heavier than I thought. And to come up with an idea to walk this man from this place. See, um, it states that these men came from the surrounding region. And this is any, any part of the Decapolis, me meaning ten cities. And they came from far and wide. And they begin to carry this man through the valleys and, and up the hills. And walk through the mud and walk in the ups and walk in the downs. And, and it made me think that... Um, um, to carry weight over a sustained amount of time is extremely heavy. Maybe you've been carrying family issues for a long time and you can't tell anyone. That's heavy. Maybe you're the owner of a Fortune five, uh, five hundred, a Fortune five hundred company, and you have hundreds of employees, and you have to care for them. That's burdensome. Maybe you just went in a startup. Maybe um, you're in the time of the future and the future is unclear and you don't know what you're going to encounter. Maybe the weight of those who you're responsible for. This is crazy. 
it's incredibly hard to walk with weight and sustain a consistent a consistent have you ever had the inner voice talking to you don't give up I know I'm acting but I'm just bringing you into the story because you all understand weight touches everybody maybe you're a caretaker of someone sickly at home and you're just trying to do a good thing and you show up with a great meal and you cooked it and you prepared it with love and you walk in the door and that loved one is like get out leave me alone you're like I'm just trying to help and potentially simultaneously you are dealing with your own sickness trying to help someone else that's weighty. In talking to students, some have, have got acceptances to colleges and they're so excited. I got accepted. Ah, yes. And then the weight that they got to pay for it shows up and their whole visage begins to modify. The sheer weight of carrying what are you carrying, friend? What are you walking through that you're dragging? Maybe you're on the cusp of divorce and it's heavy. Maybe, maybe um, the reality that you, it was really your fault, is weighing you down. Well, let me encourage you this morning with Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. It says, come to me. Can you say come to me? All you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love that last part. My burden is light. Here's an awesome thing about this is you weren't designed to carry weight by yourself. You weren't designed. And in this is a great picture of one telling the other, come on, man, come on. And another distributing, what's your name? I don't know your name. Oh, your name is Willis. Yeah, 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 I got you. And they're walking and talking to each other. And there's something about the distribution of weight that they wouldn't allow others to carry just their weight by themselves. God is calling us. Weight watchers lift. Wait. Amen? amen? Amen. Talk to me. Amen? amen? Amen. Amen. Observation number three. This is powerful and it's been speaking to me ever since it came in my heart. Wait, or observation number three. Weight watchers break through. It's going to make sense. Understand something that they continue to walk, to walk and, 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 and go forth. And they had to deal with opposition, walking from one place to, to the next place and going in the ups and downs. And, and I've been to this locale and this location. And for those that have, it's hilly and it's crazy. And there's ups and downs and there's grooves in the road. And some are cobblestone and some are, are, are dirt. And you don't want to roll your ankles with the body on your shoulder and and you have to talk to somebody walking through one thing and the next and the weight is cumbersome see there was no uber or lyft in that day they had good old-fashioned grit and communication sustained over time imagine they just get to jesus they just get to the location and they hear from afar people clapping. This is your cue. This is your cue. Awesome, awesome. They hear people clapping and they're like, oh man. And that gives them strength. You, you've been dragging Jesus. Do the clap again real quick, real quick. Oh. 
We're close. We're close. And then they get closer and they hear Jesus, the word talking, the water walker talking. They hear the miracle worker talking and they're like, is that his voice? Is that his voice? And, and it's powerful. And they're walking and they're excited. And people are in the room raising their hands. Raise your hands. Let me see. Raising their hands. And this is a bona fide church service going in. Passion to hear the word of God go forth from Jesus, the word. It was powerful. And could you imagine? They walked to the front door. Hey, Carlos, we did it, bro. <sighs> Let me set you down, Carlos. But yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> and someone opens the door. And they're like, excuse me, man, excuse me. They're like, we're full. Bam. I mean, maybe y'all are righteous, more righteous than me. But if I carried somebody for miles, if I carried through all the ups and the down and dragged my feet through mud and almost slipped off to the Sea of Galilee, if I try to get some fish, but the fish shop closed and I still got to carry your weight and I walk all this way to bring my buddy Carlos all the way to see Jesus and you shut the door on me? You have to observe the humanity in this. <laughs> Serious. I probably would have walked to the door and get out the way, you know. The Lord's still working in my heart. But understand, I see in, in, in my imagination um, as I'm um, perceiving the text, Albert going, I did again, guys. And Cecil saying, oh, no. Come on, Albert. I agreed to walk this way. I'm sore and I can't even rest, man. And Willis, is his name Willis? I don't know. Willis, Willis, you know, and that other guy that Willis brought, they're like, come on, man, don't come up with your ideas. And, and, and Albert's like, we're going to walk around the house up on the roof. Crazy. This, this, is, this is bananas. This is this is wild. Like uh, what? What? And 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 they begin to to carry him and and walk. Now you have to watch this because um in those days the roofs were covered with thatch, um tile and dirt. So there were layers of stuff, and some had stairs or access areas to get there. And they begin to walk. Now observe this for a second. Um, they begin to walk and imagine um um Carlos being on the mat and they're walking. Hold 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 it hold it. Don't don't look. Wait 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 wait. Have you ever hired some people to move and they don't know how to move? <laughs> right? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. <sighs> lift it. Oh, lift. Oh. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. It's kind of tight in here. Wait, wait, wait. Ow, my arm. You're pinching my arm. Right? <laughs> they get to the top. <sighs> We're here, guys. Now, I don't know if they put the body on, on their back while they waited for a second. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, did you bring that tool? That tool so we can unlock this roof? Tools? What you mean tools? How am I supposed to bring tools? Never mind, never mind. We got to use our hands. Just jump on it, man. No, if we jump on it, we got a body on our back. Well, okay, okay. Um, um, and then they broke through. Say breakthrough. They broke through. Here's the crazy thing about breaking through. Here's the crazy thing about breaking through. This is, this is, this is fascinating that nothing was going to oppose them. They broke through all opposition. Many of us, um, the first mile of this journey would have quit. Many of us would have threw in the towel when, when we had to, uh, when we tripped over our first rock and rolled our ankle, we would have quit. But these men had determination to continue and they went all the way to the house and imagine they encountered the crowd and the crowd doesn't often accept you. And they still didn't quit. 
and, and they walked up and they encountered an obstacle that um, required some incline and the weight, they were so close, but it was so difficult to continue. And even two inches off the ground, it was so close to continue, but they continued and, and they broke through. Say breakthrough. Breakthrough. They, they, they broke through opposition. Galatians 6.2 says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. This is so powerful because something took place. Something took place um, as, as they went. Now I need to paint a picture. Okay. They're in a church service. Put your hands together. Jesus is preaching. There's some music happening. Some people, hands are raised. Come on. Okay. All right. And, and they're praying and they're hearing the master speak and they're excited. Some people are saying amen. Say amen. amen. Oh, yeah. It was powerful. And, and um, the roof opened and they begin to lower him down. Now, imagine you're in this service like you are today. The roof breaks open and sediment begins to fall on your head. What? A tile, whoa. And thatch materials begin to fall. Is it raining thatch? And then all of a sudden, they, they, they begin to look up. They begin to look up. And the men begin to lower him in. Think for a second. The men were... were one, lower him, lower him. Bro, I'm sore. I'm sore too. Don't drop him. And, and they didn't give up. See, this reminds me of worship. This reminds me of worship. We're called to break through in worship. There's another space and a place in God for you, friend. Some of us think that, that um, we can spend 10 minutes in prayer and we can spend five minutes and come to one church service and all will be solved. I'm here to tell you something. God is looking for endurance. He's looking for you to be able to bear the weight over a sustained amount of time. And yet more. He's calling us to bear the weight. See, something about worship, if, if we would push through, if we would, would dwell and remain in the secret place for just a little bit longer, God will reveal access. He'll speak to you. He'll open up the heavens and pour out a blessing that there's not room enough to contain. He'll release uh, visions and insight. He'll give you the answer for your business. He's just calling us to worship. And I'm here to tell you something, something about worship. Let me read this. Psalm 55, 22. It says, cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you he shall never permit the righteous to be moved something about worship see true worship draws humility and honesty that takes us to a place when we can acknowledge our true need for Jesus our true need it says in in Peter's first Peter um First Peter, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verses 5 through 6, it says, Humble yourselves up under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. See, there's something about worship. In these environments, if we would forget about the neighbor to the right or to the left and enter into his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts, and into his courts with praise. If we will release ourselves, not caring about what it looks like or feels like, sometimes God allows weight to press us down in a way so that we can press up. Because he simply has a hand extended. I want to tell you something. The amazing thing is they carried weight for so long, and it was so burdensome. But when you drop your weight to Jesus... In worship, he actually takes your weight away. If you punch through the blocks and the distractions and enter in, he'll cause you to be weightless. Amen. Observation number four, and we're on the home stretch. 
First, I want to let you know something. There's another weight in this story. There's another weight in this story. Observation number four, weight watchers embrace the weight. W-A-I-T. They embrace the weight. Isaiah 40, 31 said, but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to share this with you. Sometimes the very waiting in a matter can cause us to quit. Sometimes the weighting of a situation, the sheer weight of it all, W-A-I-T, can cause us to doubt. He made a promise. I'm still waiting. I thought this would change by now. I didn't know I would have to go through that flood and that trial and that situation and that diagnosis and that person leaving me for me to actually still be here waiting. Well, consider Carlos for a second. The scripture doesn't say or declare how old he was. It doesn't declare, declare how long he was or how long he had this situation. It just said that he was sick of the palsy or he was a paralytic. That his limbs grew weak over time that caused him to be bed stricken. And he had to wait for a friend named Albert to receive an idea and act on it. And through that acting, Albert and the other friends, the carrying gang, <laughs> begin to walk and to roll with him. Could you imagine being on a stretcher? You can see, you can hear, you can talk, but you can't do anything but wait. Wait. What you doing, guys? What you doing? What you doing? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. What you doing? Walking down. Hey, I feel like my legs are slipping, but I can't feel my legs, so what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you setting me down? Oh, you have to use the bathroom, okay? <laughs> wait. Waiting at home for people to come help you use the bathroom waiting at home for people to come to your house and feed you he waited somebody say waited then they carried him for a long way on a stretcher and he waited yet again to be maneuvered up the side of a house to get all the way there and to hear your friends get upset when the crowd slams the door and, and to say, well, what, what, what are we going to do now? We came all the way and they carry him up the, the house and they break through and they let him down. He had to wait. Wait, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm, I'm falling. Oh, I'm not falling. <laughs> Sorry, I'm all in this story. I can't help it. I could see it like it's finding Nemo crazy he had to wait somebody say wait he had to wait friends he had to wait and as he waited as he waited as he waited um they begin to lower him down and he hears one friend say to the other and the rest be say okay guys on three one be steady be steady two three three all right uh, okay a little bit lower a little bit lower he was still waiting he was still waiting and somebody clap for me for a second uh, he was still waiting he heard people clapping and and then all of a sudden people change what is that coming through the roof waiting and people's opinion of the service begin to change and he heard people disgruntled he heard people talking about him he heard people why would they um lower this man in the sight of their all of them all and he had to deal with other people's opinions and wait. He had to press and wait. He had to uh, endure the wait. I don't know about you if you've ever had to pick someone up and it was dead weight. That's extremely heavy. But the weight of waiting, W-A-I-T, to the other weight is heavier. He had to wait. And being lowered, 
closer and closer. Finally, he was in the presence of Jesus. Imagine being in the presence of Jesus. Wait, this man is real? He is real? Oh, snap. And Jesus wasn't looking at him. Jesus was looking at his friends. Wow. That's crazy faith. Wow. They did all that just to get to me. I would have went to them. And he says immediately, son, your sins are forgiven you. Now that's powerful. That's powerful because Jesus knew the real thing that he needed was a heart change. But his friends are like, hey, we didn't carry him all this way <laughs> to, uh, for you to forgive his sins. Lord. But Jesus in his masterful comprehension of m the mindset of men understood all those surrounding him that there was a moment. See, Jesus is bad. Jesus is bad to the bone. He just sees them snickering and mu uh, uh, just, just talking. And, and he says, which one is easier? I mean, come on. Jesus is kind of flexing a little bit. <laughs> which one is easier? To say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, pick up your mat, your bed, and go home? Well, I know they didn't answer. Because what do you say? <laughs> And, and what they did in that particular moment was nothing. And he said, but so you know who I am. The authentic Christ that stands before you. Get up. Say get up. Say it with more force. Get up. Get up. And go home. Could you imagine? <gasps> no more sermon needs to be preached. <laughs> No more clapping needs to take place. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing excellent today. I need to award you. This was crazy. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. See, God is calling and looking for weight watchers. Ones who will bear the weight and continue in the fight. One who will lift him up in the sight of all men um, when all are around. Um, he's looking for those that will bear the weight and bring those that are around you to Jesus. Even if you have to keep bringing them to Jesus. He's also looking for weight watchers, W-A-I-T, ones that will not be discouraged because the promise seems to be delayed. Ones who are waiting to hear his instruction, seeking his face, pursuing after his names. One who's waiting at his return because, friends, Jesus is coming back. And I have to tell you, he's coming back. Wait for him. Prepare yourself. One last scripture, and I'm done. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Despising the shame. And has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is... The conclusion of the series, Lifters. Would you bow your head? Father, I'm praying for each and every person in this room.
everyone has weight that they deal with. The weight of identity, the weight of the unknown, the weight of the unimaginable, the sheer weight of the blessing. Lord, you are a heavy load sharer. You tell us that in Psalm chapter 3 verses 4, that you, God, lift our heads and you share our weight. Would you encourage every man and every woman in this place? As we depart today, let us not depart from your presence. We love you and we honor you. It's in Christ's name we pray. And everyone with faith said, Amen. Amen. Two quick announcements and you're dismissed. One, we have prayer tonight, 6 p.m. Join us for an hour of power. Start this week off with the Holy Spirit and the encouragement of brothers and sisters. Two, if you're interested in Belize, we'll be meeting right here in the front after the third service um, for students. God bless you. Go with God. He'll go with you. See you next week.